Howdy! Welcome to episode 5 of Vinyl and Hops, brought to you by Live on Tape Delay, the best podcast in the world. Got Ray Beans here, We're gonna talk our favorite 7 inches, but first, wouldn't be Vinyl and Hops without some hops. What are we drinking tonight? Yeah, Sierra Nevada's Black IPA. Look at that. Do you like Sierra Nevada? They they make the Ultra Base. Is that Sierra Nevada? They make the Ultra Base, the Torpedo, um, Peach yep. IPA. The Peach IPA. Which I just had. Yeah, they have another IPA that I've had so many times I can't even count at this point. I can't remember what it's called. It might just be the regular IPA. Now, is this part of like a special limited release kind of thing? I, we, we got these gifted to us, so I didn't see the packaging or um, anything like that. But what I saw in uh, doing a little research um, is that it's 6.9%, which is awesome, known as an American Black Ale. Availability says limited, brewed once. So I found that kind of intriguing. Uh, I did not read the bottle which maybe that has some information. It just mentions the dark versus hoppy debate that goes on in the beer world. Uh, you know, this being a black IPA, it's a dark hoppy beer, so they kind it's of- It's really good. <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, for the brood once thing, I, I think they used to make this on a regular basis and then they cut it. So this might be their, mm. can we make money off of it? Dip the toe into the water of brewing to see if it's worth making on a regular basis again type beer which if they start making this on a regular basis I wouldn't be I would not complain I would probably yeah, buy I it. like it yeah. it's kind of that mix between like a, a darker darker beer and an IPA and I think it's done very well and the seven percent like sits well for me um, I think that's like the perfect you know between seven and nine percent I think is like the perfect amount of alcohol for a beer like I got a few of them, get a good buzz going, but not get hammered. Yeah, and then I don't feel like I drank 40 of them. So, mm -hmm. uh, pretty good. Check it out, Sierra Nevada Black IPA. Let's dive into some 7 inches. I don't have a ton of 7 inches, but uh, I have a few that I've picked out. Usually, um, special uh, releases, things like that. So, i start off with my first one that I picked up. This is one of the main reasons I went to Record Store Day last year was to pick up the side-by-side, -side, I started a joke, Faith No More, and Bee Gees. Now, I was gonna say I became a Faith No More fan before a Bee Gees fan, but that's not entirely true. I was a fan of both bands in eighth grade for some reason. I got into, that's when, my, when I first started getting into disco, I don't know, um, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, um, that kind of got me into it, and then Faith No More as well. When I first heard I started a joke, um, I had a feeling that um, it was a cover because it really didn't sound like a lot of the other songs, even though their songs were kind of all over the spectrum. Um, but then I found out it was a Bee Gees song, which is awesome, and it's a Bee Gees song from 1968. They did have a career before the whole disco sound uh, that they were basically known for. Um, so this is off kind of that era. It's pretty good. Just something I want to have in the collection. Obviously I've never even opened it because I've heard both songs and that's good enough for me. But just a nice little piece to add to my collection. I really like that they do these every year and uh, looking forward to seeing what comes up this year. Uh, one of the few seven inches in my collection is also one of the side-by-sides, but mine's a little different angle with it. Mine is a Rush and Love side by side with some nice color on the vinyl there. Nice. But uh, it's seven and seven is. Um, I honestly don't know which one was the original one. I'm assuming Love because I've never heard Rush uh, on an album seven and seven is. But it was a interesting pickup that I saw Rush. I'm a huge Rush fan. It was at Record Store Day for a few dollars and I had to pick it up. I think they're reasonably priced too. I think you can get them for under ten bucks. So, yeah. just just kind of cool. There's a lot more that I wanted that I haven't been able to get, uh, just because of availability. But um, it's very cool. I have another one that I may talk about in a future episode. My next one, Carcass, 
Captive Bolt Pistol 7-inch. This was essentially the first new carcass that I got to hear uh, when it came out a few years back. Uh, the first new carcass I'd heard since Swansong. So, um, I, I love it. That's, I don't really know what to say about this. It is on a... So you want to pull it out here. So here, a nice blue, blue color. I like it. So I'm just got a little splatter to it. So side A is Captain Bolt Pistol. Side B is Intensive Battery Brooding, which was released on one of their. I believe they did a little EP release with uh, some of their B sides. Um, both very good songs. I mean, I can't say anything bad about Carcass, and I never will. Every song they write is amazing and I'm glad they're back and I really hope I get to see them again soon. So uh, yeah, I got lucky to pick this up before the album release and uh, good addition to my collection as well. I'm glad they came out with that because I probably had never heard of Carcass until they re-released or until they came out the new material recently, which was when Rob told me to start listening to Carcass and Captain Bolt Pistol was one of the first ones I listened to because it was one of the first releases. So. It was kind of my gateway drug into diving down the carcass rabbit hole. I kind of love that the album, too, like, I assume this is a Captive Bolt pistol, which I believe is used on animals, but just looking at it, it's badass. Like, you'd think it's like some freaking gun or whatever. It might be used to, I think, knock them out. I think so. I think it does a bolt of air through their skulls yeah. before they're slaughtered. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> but it does look badass. Like you would think, like man, it's a gun on the cover, and no, it's a captive bolt pistol, and it's equally as evil. It's a very metal thing to put on the cover of an album. Yes, I always, always love their lyrics and <laughs> covers and song titles. Uh, the next one I have is uh, one of my favorite punk bands from the Bouncing Souls. Uh, they did a release for their 20th anniversary where they put out a series of four different 7 inches. And this was when I was in college, so I had no money. But one of them had a song, Gasoline, which is probably my favorite Bouncing Soul song ever put out. Uh, it's been on every single running playlist I've ever made on Spotify to uh, forever. But basically the four series made up four different sections of the cover of an album. So if you got all four of the... 20th anniversary series, seven inches, you were able to make a picture of them. Um, but this was the only one I was able to get. And like I said, it was basically for one song, but it's a nice bright blue vinyl and it's got some great songs on it. But uh, it was one of those things that knowing that it was gonna be a very limited release and it had one of my favorite songs, I had to pick it up. Now, is Gasoline one of the more popular songs? Like what song would I know? I feel like I've heard them. <sighs> I feel like Hopeless Romantic is probably their most popular album. Hmm. It's, I mean, they're they're from New Jersey. It's a very just straightforward, upbeat punk sound. Um, know. You know, they don't really. I don't know, it's it's political without being overly political. Like they're more on the they're somewhere in the middle of Blink One Eighty Two and Bad Religion. Okay. <laughs> the, the kind of like this, the up, uppy poppy right. sound of Blink One Eighty Two, but the punkiness of yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe I'll check that out. So maybe I'm not familiar with them. But Gasoline may be one of their lesser known ones, but it's my favorite because it is probably a very straightforward punk message with a very uh, upbeat sound to it. But yeah, yeah. I highly recommend it. Last but not least. 55 Bands on Tunes from the Toilet, Volume 1. <laughs> I'm not even sure what label this is released on. This has my own band on it, uh, which is why I own it. Obviously, it's the only thing I have. I've released music on, you know, of course, CD, cassette, floppy disk. Um, that's a pretty cool release. Uh, but never vinyl, so we had the opportunity uh, to be on... Tunes from the Toilet Volume 1 with 54 other fantastic bands. On a 7 inch? On a 7 inch, yes. <laughs> I believe we had maybe um, 15 to 25 seconds for a song each band. <laughs> so, and there's here's the little, here's the cryptic east there. Nice. Yeah, with uh, Madonna. I'm sure that's not legal. 
uh, it could be continuum because I'm seeing that label uh, quite a bit here. Um, we, we are track two on side A with Cougar and a Kiss shirt. It's the best? I, I really don't know. 15 to 30 seconds. I assume it's 15 <laughs> to 30 seconds. I've never played it live. I probably haven't played it since this was written. But it's a damn good tune. <laughs> and there's some other great bands on here besides Cryptic Yeast like Sunken Cheek, Sketchy Fucker, Rectal Necrosis. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Rectal Necrosis is probably going to lead to some pretty good toilet tunes. I <laughs> think, yeah, yeah. Tinnitus Stimulus. That's, it took me a while to even read that. Rosy Palms. <laughs> Swallowing Bile. Mr. Potato Head is a Tranny. Deceiver. Oh, Sifting Through Droppings for Nutrients. STDFN, which is one of George's other projects. Cocaine Breath. Oh, that sounds rough. Did you snort cocaine? Do you, does it really give you a breath? How much cocaine would you have to snort to get cocaine breath from it? I don't know. I don't, I've never done cocaine. I can't, I can't provide a bit on this. The song title is Politicians Taste Like Dirt, <laughs> which I'd also like to know how you know this. So, Cocaine Breath, if you ever come across this, please reach out and answer those two questions. I would appreciate it. That being said, we're done here. We'll see you next time for episode six. Please check out Live on Tape Delay via iTunes and give us a rating zero to five stars. Just let us know what you think of it, what we could do to improve, what you'd like to see on this show via the comment section below, and what you'd like to hear in iTunes or Google Play, or wherever, wherever you can leave a comment. And maybe a thumbs up on the YouTube video too. Give us a thumbs up. We'll keep bringing you more beer and more vinyl until we run out of either, and then we'll change the format of the show to something else. Or we'll buy more vinyl. I don't know. See you next time. Peace!